Good morning, everybody. It's, it's nice to, to have you here. It's a beautiful morning today. I want to start off by uh, doing the Pledge of Allegiance, and uh, I want to call our school board member, Mr. Jesus Gonzalez, if you could please join us. So we're pleased to have everybody here today to celebrate the work of the Disadvantaged Communities Infrastructure Task Force and celebrate the introduction of Assembly Bill 2060. I want to thank our group of speakers for their continued commitment and support to all of our communities across the Coachella Valley. I want to start off by thanking our district president, Mr. John Powell, Sergio Carranza, and Jeanette with Pueblo Unido, Silvia Paz with, with Building Healthy Communities, and our assembly member Eduardo Garcia. I also wanna thank Mike Walsh with the Riverside County EDA, Ana Yeli Zavala with the Supervisor's Office, Megan Beeman with Beeman Law, and all our staff here at CVWD who've done a wonderful job supporting and providing uh, a lot of effort in what we're gonna address today, which is trying to help our disadvantaged communities. Our valley has a long history, our district has a long history, and I'm happy and proud of the wisdom and the foresight and commitment of CBWD and our ability to recognize that the needs of our disadvantaged communities are important to address. I'd like to call our board president, Mr. John Powell, to give him a chance to say a few words. Well, good morning and uh, welcome to Coachella and Coachella Valley Water District uh, on our Coachella campus here. Uh, really glad you're here. Um, we are celebrating our 100th anniversary, our centennial. We have some commemorative water bottles. Please feel free to take one of those. I think I saw some pens also out there. Uh, so CVWD has been here a long time. We're kind of in integrated into the community, providing a number of services, water, sewer, uh, and flood control, uh, among others. Uh, and so a lot of good things have happened over a hundred years. And you think maybe we've had, you know, all the good ideas or we've done all the good things in the first hundred years, but maybe we haven't. Maybe there's things we haven't done that uh, we can do during the second hundred years. Um, I remember about seven and a half years ago, we talked about what can we do to help uh, with folks that don't have access to our system. And I was told by all the experts it cannot be done. Under state law, et cetera, whatever, all kinds of excuses. No, can't do it. And I was okay with that um, until something happened. Uh, Costello Estrada was elected to uh, our seat, uh, the seat in the Coachella Valley Water District Board. He was probably also told it can't be done and uh, he didn't react the same way I did. He says, uh-uh, we're gonna do it, and here we are. So uh, we are um, working together with so many different groups in the area uh, and uh, coming up with creative ways to provide services to folks that don't have access currently to our system, and I'm on board. So uh, now I believe, too, it can be done, and we're gonna do it. Uh, I would just maybe put one little challenge out there, you know, how do you measure success? It's not really how many dollars or how many meetings or how many people you talk to. It's how many people are gonna, who, whose lives are gonna change because they can get up in the middle of the night and, and get a glass of water from the kitchen faucet. Uh, let's count that, right? Let's see how many people's lives are going to change. I think that's the measure of our success. Uh, some of us take it for granted. Some, some of us who live right down the street uh, don't have that luxury. So uh, I'm really looking forward to supporting the efforts of Costello and the rest of you to, uh, and of course, Senator Mo Garcia, to make this happen. And don't let people tell you it can't be done. So thank you. Thank you, President Powell, for that uh, wonderful words. The, the next uh, 
speakers that we're going to introduce, they, I, I think they, Sergio, uh, what Pueblo Unido has been at the forefront of, of all this effort and all the work that he's done with disadvantaged communities. I, you've been doing it for, for over a decade, I imagine. And, uh, you know, Sergio, uh, when we first, uh, uh, we, we were having conversations, you know, we were going to run for, for Division Five, and, and Sergio and I had a lot of conversations about some of the things that needed to be addressed and, and how the Coachella Valley Water District could, could, could play a vital role in, in providing support for, for all these projects and funding opportunities that, that the CVWD and Sergio, among with others, like Building Healthy Communities and the Leadership Council for Justice and Accountability have been working uh, since the beginning of uh, the Irwin program. So, so it, there was a setup, it was just a matter of kind of how can CVWD uh, start to lend a, a more more helpful role. So uh, I'm going to ask Sergio and, and Jaime Gonzalez if they could please come up here and kind of share their thoughts with us. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so very much uh, to the Coachella Valley Water District, uh, Director Estrada and President uh, Powell and and all of you um, for being this morning. Um, there is so many angles that we can actually present this this progress, this substantial progress that we have that we have made to this point. And I really I really do take pride when um, President Powell say, "Well, nothing can be done." And somebody told me that it's, that's the best challenge I can possibly take. <laughs> that's the kind of things I love to do. So, but one important thing that I learned through this experience is that the work begins in the community. That's where the everything starts. And I'm going to leave the opportunity to Jaime from the perspective of the community. Uh, how can we continually to, uh, continuously learn about what are the priorities? Because that's the cornerstone of everything. The priorities from the community. Not our priorities as, as professionals, as a directors, or, you know, um, the most important thing, the key and the fundamental issue about being successful is having the community involvement in these kind of processes. Um, there has been so much history. Um, we have a great valley. We have different organizations, local institutions, government agencies, and elected officials, together with the with the support from the community and the nonprofits, uh, that have made this 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 process a reality. Um, but one thing that I can actually tell you that we're moving really fast and strongly is that this collaborative have uh, probably more than 200 years of experience in all the people who participate in the, in the DASIC and the Disadvantaged Communities Infrastructure Committee. So now that we have the power of the community behind pushing for, you know, changes, structural changes, because it's an evolution. Now we have the expertise together uh, with the support and feedback from the community that combine two great levels uh, that will help us to measure how successful we are. We start with the technical level, and there are some things that we could do in a short-term solution, and there are some other solutions that takes longer to do that. So that's the main framework of this committee, finding immediate solutions to resolve the issues with uh, water contamination, uh, with sanitation issues, and, and uh, flow control. So this is a strategy that this group is actually creating because of the expertise that this committee has. So that's fundamentally. The second area is public policy. And that's what our experts uh, and leaders like uh, such Assembly Member Garcia, who uh, very shortly will speak about one of the greatest you know, achievements um, among so many that he has made, uh, is fundamental. 
So this committee has the opportunity to tackle these two areas because while we're working to provide drinking water and while we are actually working to provide sanitation, we are finding other challenges. For example, you know, a specific public policies at, 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 at the water district, at the county level, or any other uh, obstacles that are creating uh, a level of not being uh, access to this kind of a resources. So this committee, again, has the opportunity to create a vision, and I want to make this very, very clear, and I'm very proud to say that, humbly speaking, uh, this is the first committee ever established in the state of California. This is the committee that is actually leading and being the force of uh, the disadvantaged communities under the Proposition 1 program led by two main agencies, which is the uh, State Department of Water uh, Boards and the State Department of Water Resources. So once again, you know, we are definitely the, the lead uh, region in the state of California that is putting together this cadre of people uh, that have the expertise in all the angles to provide the service that is needed in the Eastern Coachella Valley. And with that, I will leave uh, Jaime just to offer the perspective from the community because he's also a leader of the community and he can actually tell us in a better and more profound way, you know, the impact of this community in their lives. Thank you, Sergio. Good morning, everybody. Welcome on from Unar Castillo. Thank you for the opportunity, Paul, Eduardo. Thank you guys for being here. As a um, mega community council member and living down the street without in the community where water is not really available from the same system as the water district, uh, this has really been a challenge for us to get our voice heard at the uh, levels that is being heard right now. We are uh, very grateful. Um, we have been able and been given the opportunity to give our problems and to be heard of the, not quite injustices, but the challenges that we have to deal with. When you have projects that are financed, ready, um, just ready to construct to build housing, and then you're being told that there's not enough water pressure for as many units as you want. And you have to build less. And then the income is less. Now the project doesn't qualify for that loan. And so it all goes down here from downhill from there. But now with this community that we build, we're able to join our needs with the big projects that the water district has. We're able to connect to their future major investments. And it doesn't cost a lot more from them. But I see how it's not that they didn't want to address these issues. They just didn't know that the issues existed. And that's where this um, joint venture comes in. Now they, they, are, they, they know that the needs are out there and now they're able to address it with not, with not that much more cost to their major projects. And for that, I want to thank everybody here present. Thank you guys. Thanks to the board members and Chilla Valley Water District for listening to us. And, and we do have several projects on the pipeline that are going to benefit a lot of people. And we are connecting to CBWD's major projects that will help a lot of people just living down the street that don't have the benefits that up the street has. Having said that, thank you guys. So I think it's important to kind of give some historical context of, of how all of this has kind of been developed and, and how we got here where, we're, where, where we are today. And really our, our history in working with DAX, it goes back about a decade, I think, with the, with the whole Irwin process, right? And so CBWD has been, has been kind of involved with, in, in, a, in a way, in one way or another, uh, with, with disadvantaged communities in the Eastern Coachella Valley through that program, um, through the Coachella Valley Regional Water Management Group. And, and as part of that process, there was a, a disadvantaged community outreach demonstration program that was really uh, successful due to the, 
to the non, uh, non-government partners like Pueblo Unido and Leadership Council and Building Healthy Communities. And what this process did was, was identify uh, the specific limitations of, of that participation and the grant funding opportunities that were available to them. One of the things it did is it, it, it identified uh, the difficulty in, pre- in pre- preparing grant applications. It identified the importance of finding and including technical expertise the possible conflicts of interest and or priorities between property owners and residents. And most importantly, the reimbursement process required by DWR, which uh, caused a number of issues. One of uh, the reimbursements sometimes took, uh, took months and created ca- uh, ca- cash flow issues. And ultimately what it did, it, it started stalling projects, right? So I, I think that that program really kind of, what it did is I, it identified a number of things that needed to kind of be addressed, and and I think that was the the reason why this DAC task force got created was to try to alleviate some of those issues. And so, even though our work with DAC started over a decade ago, I think that it was up until maybe 2016 when the task force was formed that we really started kind of trying to break through those barriers. And I think that uh, AB 2060. Is, is is just another tool of, of how we're going to get through, through some of those issues. So I want to call up uh, Silvia Paz with Building Healthy Communities. See, uh, they've also been very involved from the very beginning, and, and I, and I want to thank Silvia for, for all her work. Good morning. First, thanks to everyone who has been working to get us to this day. And um, very touched by uh, Mr. Powell's words about how his own story about shifting um, a perspective, right? And, and I think that's really the story that our communities, um, communities that we call disadvantaged, has been um, prepared to do, to, to shift the perspective from a I'm disadvantaged to know um, I have the tools to be able to do this and I have the representatives that um, I can talk to that are going to help us. Uh, So like uh, Sergio mentioned, there are so many angles uh, to that we can um, talk about the disadvantaged infrastructure committee. And the angle that I want to offer is one that puts in perspective who our community is. I remember when I was a young teacher for Coachella Valley Unified School District going to buy something in Palm Desert at Best Buy and um, the employee asked me, oh, so what do you do, small talk, right? And I was like, oh, I'm a teacher in Coachella. And the response was like, well, how do you do it? How do you survive? Isn't it dangerous? And then I think, you know, I'll take it as curiosity. Um, many people are curious because they don't know who our communities are. But um, through the disadvantaged community, I think um, disadvantaged infrastructure task force, we really have a concrete example of who our community is. Our community is um, a community of professionals. It's yes, we have uh, deep roots with agriculture and farm workers, but there's professionals who live in these communities. There's educators, um, there's policy analysts, there are attorneys, um, and, and Megan, and I'll, um, I do want to highlight the role that Megan played in this effort a little bit further, but you know, our community is very diverse and very rich and has so many things to offer. So that's one. Um, we have a community that is persistent, that when they tell us no can't be done, we find a way to go, you know, to figure out, you know, I've heard that, but what about this? Or what about this? So it's that uh, resilience and persistence um, that we have. We have a community that is very, very brave. A community within the disadvantaged um, infrastructure task force. It really started with residents, um, two college students, um, La Familia Gámez, uh, La Familia Castro, um, talking to an attorney. Which a lot of times it's scary. Why would you know? I don't want to be involved in any legal matters. That's not going to look well. Uh, but they had enough to believe that you know. 
we have a right and we're going to submit a demand letter to CBWD because at the the root of the cause is that we don't feel we have a representative that understands, that is going to share the perspective, that is going to be advocating for us there. And so um, we were very happy that when CBWD received that demand letter, you know, they took the appropriate steps. And in those steps, again, it was community driven. There were many of us sitting and having those conversations about, well, how are we going to redraw the district lines so that we can be ready? Because it was inevitable. This was going to happen. We weren't going to change the way that CBWD was selecting its representatives. Right? And, and again, that's the story of having courage. We have a, a very brave um, people. And there are many, many examples, right? The courage that it took um, for Castulo to put his name in that ring. And it's like, I'm going to run. I'm going to do this. And the courage that it took um, our assembly member that, yes, I'm, I can represent the people of the Coachella Valley at a state level. So we have so many stories of, uh, of courage. And, um, and really, I, I wouldn't be um, doing a fair job if I didn't recognize the, the leadership that it took um, from Megan. Megan is not only um, a, an attorney, a civil rights attorney, she's a member that lives in the community and she had been working um, on, on among uh, the many things that she said. I, don't, I can't even say that it was work, but she was part of the Building Healthy Communities um, Built Environment Group that was looking at things like this. And she played a critical role in helping our residents um, believing that yes, this can be done and I'm here and I'm not here to do this for you. I'm here as a partner to show you the way. And, and again, I think that's what we are all doing when um, John Powell came to the table for the infrastructure committee and, and he was willing to support Castulo, right? And, and now you are, we're, we're a team. And that's the story and the framework that I wanted to offer about this celebration that it's it takes many, many of us, and we just cannot forget, and that we need to challenge that when we're talking all those disadvantaged communities, like, let's pause for a minute. What do we mean, and, and who, who are we talking about? And let's recognize that together we can really achieve not only this change, but many, many changes that are about to come. So um, again, thank you. So. Wonderful words by Sylvia. So that's what we did. Uh, obviously, that's the whole story there. It, obviously, a lot of pieces, how we got here, uh, Megan's uh, work, and trying to redraw those lines, and 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 CBWD's uh, uh, commitment to to follow or to redraw the lines, and it, that's what kind of led to all this here today. Uh, the work that the staff and the community were involved in with the Irwin process, identifying some of those issues, and then finally, uh, the process of now CBWD with the representative kind of getting together with the community. I remember we had a few, you know, one of the first things that I did was, was spend a few days over there with uh, the community at the San Jose Community Center where we met with the Polanco owners. We were there with, uh, with the Building Healthy Communities, uh, I think it's called Unión de Polancos, which was really a group of about 30 plus some mobile home park owners that really uh, wanted to say, hey, you know, we need we need to address these issues. And, and we've been having these issues for the last 20 years. You know, they're not new issues. They, you know, this is this is this is something we need to address. And so it's important for us to create some sort of working group. And uh, we started having those conversations back in 2014. And it took some time for us to really try to put the framework together or really try to give some definition to what it was that we were trying to do. And, uh, you know, we, we all worked through it. Uh, Megan was very involved in that. Sylvia, Sergio, uh, Mariela, uh, at that time was the, with the Leadership Council. And, and what we did is, you know, we started drafting a structure of what this task force was going to try to achieve. And one of the things that we did was create a mission statement and uh, we identified some some what we called immediate actions some short-term goals some long-term goals and uh, I just I just want to take a, a moment here to read what that mission statement was and, and the mission statement was the mission of the 
DAC Infrastructure Task Force is to secure access to safe, affordable drinking water, wastewater, and flood control services in historically disadvantaged Coachella Valley regions through strategic planning, funding, procurement, and needs assessment, all in collaboration with the community and stakeholders, right? So, so that became our, our mission statement. And, and at the same time, we, we laid out some of those things that we wanted to work on long-term, short-term, and some of those immediate actions. And one of the first things that we did was try to partner up with, with the county of Riverside and, and have them identify, uh, help us identify the location of all these small water systems throughout the Coachella Valley. There's probably over 100 of them. And at the same time, try to overlay that all those all those communities with our existing infrastructure that we have in that area, whether it's sewer and water, and really try to start creating some sort of of, of work plan on how are we going to how are we going to extend our infrastructure to them? How are we going to consolidate them? Is it possible to consolidate all of them? Maybe we start here. Maybe we start over there. So that's that's really what we started doing. And, and it didn't really kind of take off until maybe 2016. And I think it was June of 2016 when we really had our first official meeting as a task force because prior to that, we were meeting mainly as a community and there wasn't really the participation from CBWD. It was until, until 2016 that, that we said, okay, well, we're ready to kind of bring on CBWD and in order for this to be successful, it's gonna require that uh, we have the support of another board member and it's gonna require that we assign specific st uh, staff, right, key staff, that's gonna help us kind of address the issues. And if we have a platform that we, that we need to execute, that staff is gonna buy into the execution of those goals. And so that's what we did, right? We, we, we brought on uh, our engineers, we brought on President Powell, and the train back there's gonna take a while, so I'm just gonna keep going. And, uh, and so, you know, we've, we've done a lot in the last two years, I think, and, and it all started with the mapping. One of the things that, uh, that I think has been successful is really the, the work and, and where we're at now with the St. Anthony's uh, sewer project. Uh, you know, that project had a lot of issues, uh, but we were able to work with the, uh, our supervisor to address some of those issues. Uh, the permitting process, there's also been some funding issues. CBWD has been very, very involved in, in trying to make sure that that project happens. And just recently we heard from USDA that they've committed to more funding to make sure that that project moves forward. And so that's been, you know, that's I think a, 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 an example of a success story. You know, that's a, that's a mobile home park that has over 100 units. And uh, you know, the, the sanitary conditions in that mobile home park are not the best. And, and I think that uh, because of the work of this task force, you know, pretty soon here, uh, that community there is going to have uh, now access to sanitation services that most of the valley kind of takes for granted. So, so that's a, a, a huge success there. And one of the other things that we're going to start working on here pretty soon is uh, we have received a half a million dollar grant uh, to to really try to create a, a water master plan that focuses on the eastern side of the Coachella Valley, specifically to, to address these small water systems that are out there that need to be consolidated or in some way or another need to be addressed. And, and so I think that the, with that grant, what, what that's gonna do, it's probably gonna pave the way to create more projects similar to the one that we just talked about, St. Anthony's, right? So we're gonna start really looking into this very, very uh, much so in detail. And, and so I'm, I'm very happy uh, to what that's gonna bring. One of the other things that, that also makes me very excited is is the fact that uh, you know we're committed to uh, putting in a, a pipeline, another source of, of water, to the community of Mecca. You know, we we've, we've identified that it's important for us to build an 18-inch pipeline along Avenue 66, which is really going to open up the door for that entire area there. I mean, we have some issues in Mecca with uh, with supply limitations, and I think uh, building this pipeline, you know, it's going to cost maybe about 15 million dollars, but but it's, I think it's gonna start transforming that area there along Avenue 66, Pierce Street, and the entire community of Mecca. I think, I think that with this line, you know, you're really gonna start seeing some involvement in housing and the, the Coachella Valley Housing Coalition. I, 
I know that they're, you know, they're eager to start working. The, the tribe has a bunch of land out there, the, the Torres Martinez tribe, and, 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 and a lot of what kind of is kind of stopping all of that from kind of booming is the lack of infrastructure. So, so working on this uh, water master plan for the Eastern Coachella Valley, it, you know, it, it's, it's very exciting to me. So now I think you know we're going to get into a little bit of what this bill is all about and how it ties into all the work that we're doing. And uh, back in 2015, there was SB 208 that kind of it kind of you know took us in the right step of addressing some of these uh, funding issues and uh, advance payment issues. But it was uh, it was somewhat limited uh, to where that type of strategy could be applied. And and I think that with this new bill. Uh, 2060 is probably going to open up the uh, the doors to a lot more opportunity and so with that I'm going to uh, invite uh, our assembly member Eduardo Garcia and uh, I just want to thank him for all his work and his commitment to our community and the disadvantaged community the CBW. Thank you. Thank you. When Vice uh, President Castro Estrada says he's excited you got to believe that he's excited you know he may not project the excitement that he's talking about, but he's excited. This stuff gets him excited. I spent long hours talking to him about the important uh, investments that need to happen in the eastern parts of uh, Riverside County and, and this water agency. And, uh, and believe me, uh, if he says he's excited, he is excited. Um, look, for me, my job is, is, is the one where when this group comes together, identifies its priorities, right, that are resident-driven solutions is what we've heard. We've heard that when the group gets together, you start some communication, you agree to do some collaboration, you start planning, and now we're in the execution phase of some of that work. AB 260 is really uh, an extension of the work that you've all set forward to make sure that uh, this part of our county receives the necessary resources to build out the infrastructure that we're talking about and eliminating the barriers that take place within interagencies at the state level that say well we can only give you this much money and until you use that money then we'll send you a reimbursement you know maybe in six months maybe at the end of the year and it creates problems for our local agencies nonprofit organizations that are doing this collaborative work and so I see my job as um, a policymaker at the state level pretty straightforward it's two things it's past policy that is reflective of what's happening or the needs of our community and execute on the dollars bring home the money as they would say and I feel very confident that by pushing AB 2060 we're aligning um, the projects the need and the accessibility to these dollars I mean that's no other simple way to explain what this bill does it's making sure that our parts of the state are receiving the necessary monies to ensure uh, number one that public health and well-being of our residents right is um, really taken into consideration when we're implementing this infrastructure number two is that by doing so we're also uh, encouraging further economic development opportunities in an area that has been limited right with investment coming in and diversifying those opportunities whether it be the people in thermal mecca oasis or even further down and third i think it's beginning to develop the model as was mentioned earlier that throughout the state of california there is such a thing as interagency collaboration and having residents at the table driving solution-based ideas and ultimately executing on them and delivering on the projects right and so i wanted just to really commend the leadership of the water district and of course vice president estrada for the work that he's done look many of us have the story of we've been told we can't do it right you can't it, it the rules say that you can't and and so we're now in positions where we um make the rules right and within the four corners of the law right uh, we're going to push Right? Uh, we're going to push, whether it be at the state level, at the school level, at the city level, and now at the water agency levels, to make sure that we're doing what's needed and what is ultimately the right thing, as, as um, you know, noble as that may sound. That's really what we're doing here, is pushing an agenda that is addressing the issues of public health, that's uh, addressing the issues of economic opportunities, right? and ultimately setting a standard throughout the state for the work that needs to be done. I chair the Water, Parks, and Wildlife Committee. And we know that there will be resources uh, made available uh, to ensure that um, the alignment of this policy and the needs here ultimately make all its way down to getting the money here. I don't think that the getting the money for these projects has 
at least in this con context, has been the biggest problem. It's actually the barriers to pushing the money out. We're getting those out of the way. And we're going to be refilling those buckets of money for safe, clean drinking water via Prop 68 and the possibility of an additional water bond in November. And all those fall under my purview. And uh, as I mentioned, you know, making sure that we're addressing the infrastructure needs of Oroville Dam are important, right? Making sure that the infrastructure of moving water from north to central parts of California are extremely important and fall under my jurisdiction. But getting safe, clean drinking and affordable water to the people that I represent in the 56th district is my number one priority uh, before the others. And so I just wanted to say uh, thank you to the water district, again, Vice President uh, Estrada, uh, President Powell, uh, for your persistence and support of this agenda. And without a doubt to you know our community uh, partners, whether they're the nonprofit organizations and or other uh, interagency uh, groups, and look, we haven't mentioned this, uh, and I think we, we should, you know, the Congressman's office and the work that uh, the USDA is facilitating out in this area is another key piece to the puzzle. And so we ought to recognize, you know, uh, how valuable it is to have a Congressman who uh, born and raised in this area and understands these uh, issues intimately, as well as our supervisor, who plays a key role in the facilitation of permitting and planning and making sure that both uh, not just he understands it, but the people that work in these departments and agencies at the county understand how important and a priority this is for him as well. So AB 260 cuts through the red tape and ensures that our agencies and community, uh, disadvantaged community uh, task force like, like this one, uh, gets its hands on the dollars to implement you know, the projects that you've all identified as priorities. So uh, thank you, Water District, for um, inviting us to recognize uh, your work and at the same time highlight a part of your work and that's uh, this legislative agenda that you've set forward. Look, we started our year in 2015 introducing one of our first bills was a, a carryover of the work that our supervisor did along with uh, Silvia Paz with BHC where we were looking at short-term solutions to this water uh, infrastructure issue. It was extending the law to make sure that water filtration systems can continue to be utilized to clean the water on a temporary basis. And in a short period of time now, we're talking about a more permanent solution. We're talking about filtrations for a little while, and now we're talking about hookup to the centralized infrastructure uh, to be able to then again extend you know, the goals and objectives that we have and go further into the eastern parts of Coachella Valley. Public health, economic development opportunities, and really setting the standard on how work can get done in collaboration. So thank you again for the opportunity to say a few words. Congratulations, CBWD, not only for 100 years of uh, celebrating um, history, but also making uh, the next 100 years a very positive um, piece of history, I think, that we'll all be sitting back at some point and remembering that you know we made an effort to improve the lives of a lot of people in the eastern parts of the Coachella Valley. Thank you. Yeah, so you have, you have to believe me that I'm very excited. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, thank you for being here. I, I think, you know, it makes me happy. It makes me excited. Uh, and, and our president knows that, uh, you know, I, I have a lot of conversations with him as well. And I tell him, hey, you, you know, this is important for us. We need your support. And, uh, and I'm very thankful for, for all the support that he's, that he's shown over the years. And uh, but yeah, you know, thank all of you for being here. I, I, think, I think this is how we end. And obviously, uh, it's a it's a it's a beautiful day and it's a lot of great things happening and thank all of you